Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity, and welcome to episode 41. In this tutorial we are going to focus on being able to exit our car once we've gotten into it and perhaps driven somewhere around the corner. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So. The way we're going to do this is pretty much the inverse of what we've done to get into the car originally and we're going to do this tutorial in two slightly uh, separate stages. The first one is getting the mechanics of getting out of the car sorted and then we'll work on a little bug that will appear later on as we've done that. So we're going to start by creating a new script and we'll call this one vehicle exit. So this is going to be slightly mirrored, like I say, towards our vehicle entry. And we can use the same kind of code that we've previously written. We're going to start by adding in the namespace for the car. So using unity standard assets dot vehicles dot car semicolon. And we can get rid of the annotations and void start because we don't need them. So I'm going to be flipping between a vehicle entry that we wrote last time, a vehicle exit, uh, a couple of times. And we are going to take these three variables. So the vehicle cam, the player, and live vehicle. The player is not going to matter too much uh, until the second half of this tutorial. Uh, but those variables will be important. Uh, we can also take this section here where we've got if input.getKeyDown is E. That's also going to be important. So let's take that if statement out of there and place it in vehicle exit inside the update. So the reason we're doing this is because we are basically doing the inverse of everything. So for example, the player .set active faults, let's take that and let's place it before the vehicle cam and say that is true. And vehicle cam is then false. We also then have to turn the components of the car off because we are no longer using the car at this point. It's no longer the player, as it were. So they're all false. So this line here is somewhat important because we need to turn that on. But I want to give ourselves a little bit of time before we uh, ec before we can re-enter the vehicle, just in case. So let's create a coroutine. So down here, let's have I enumerator, and let's call it entering or enter again oh close bracket open curly bracket and we'll wait for half a second so yield return new wait for seconds and in brackets 0 0.5 f semicolon and then what we do is we say this right here the box collider needs to be turned on again so Basically, we're going to have to declare another variable, and that's going to be the entry trigger itself. So up here, public game object, and we'll have that as entry trig semicolon, which means this dot game object now changes to entry trig, and this whole line moves out of here into the coroutine, and it's changed to true because we want to turn it back on and then the final thing to do would be to turn this game object off again so this dot game object dot set active false semicolon and the last thing within the entire script to exit the vehicle is to start this coroutine so start coroutine uh, enter Again, open close bracket, close bracket again, semicolon, and save the script. And as I always say, if you have any problems with the script, head over to my website, downloads and assets, Grand Theft Auto series, and tutorial number 41, and you can download this script for free there. So we've also got to modify our vehicle entry script as well. So if we head over to our vehicle entry script, we are going to have to put can enter back to false once we've entered our uh, vehicle. But it does also mean that we need to activate the vehicle exit. Uh, 
So we're going to do the same as what we've done in vehicle exit, use a coroutine. So after we have the live vehicle dot get component car already enabled is true, let's put can enter equals false. So as when we get out the car, we can easily get back in if we need to. So next, let's create that coroutine down the bottom. So I enumerator, and we'll have this as exit trigger, o close bracket, open curly bracket. And because of that, we'll now need to set a variable for the exit trigger. So public game object exit trig semicolon. And down here in the coroutine, we're just going to wait for half a second. So yield, return new, wait for seconds. Again, we'll have 0.5f, semicolon. And then we will say exit trig dot set active, true, semicolon. And then we need to start the coroutine here. So start coroutine exit trigger oh close bracket close bracket semicolon and save so these two scripts are now interacting with each other and they're determining whether we are in the vehicle and can get out or whether we are out the vehicle and can get in so let's head back into unity and let's start by setting another game object on car so right click and we'll have create empty and this one will be exit trigger. And we will place the vehicle exit script onto there and also turn it off. So we now need to set the vehicle cam, the player, which is right there, live vehicle, which is the car itself, and entry trig, which is that one there. And if we go to the car, uh, not the car, sorry, the entry trigger. And we need to set that exit trig on there as well. And save. So if I head back in, we can see what's going on with this now. As soon as we get in, as we did last time, we're now saying that we can no longer enter, obviously because we are in there, and we're also activating this game object. So whenever we press E now, it means that all this is going to run and we're going to exit the vehicle. So let's head back into Unity, press play, and let's check this out. And we will come across a bug, um, which we will sort. I just want to show you the mechanics of getting in the vehicle and getting out just by pressing the E key. So let's head over. far so good so let's get into the vehicle and there we go and now let's exit the vehicle see what happened there yep you saw what happened we got out at the exact same spot so if we were to perhaps um, get in the vehicle here and drive around again see we've got back in and if we were to get out here we don't end up next to the car. So to fix that, we're gonna add in a little bit of code and we're gonna be quite clever with how we do this. So we have the player right here, vehicle exit right there. And what we're basically going to do is we are going to say that the player becomes a child object of um, the actual trigger itself on vehicle entry and we do have it on both so now I think about it I'm trying to think which one would be best to have it in let's try with vehicle entry first of all so let's say uh, for the player so down here we will say the player dot transform dot parent equals and we'll say this dot game object dot transform semicolon so what's happening here is we are saying that the player should be attached to this particular object 
and when it's attached to the object, it will travel with it wherever that object goes, even though the player is not actually visible in the scene. So if we save that and go to vehicle exit, and here we need to do the inverse. So we need to uncouple the player from the car, because if we don't, the player will resume, but it will still travel with the car. So if we go here to uh, just above enter again, and we say, the player dot transform dot parent equals null semicolon and save the reason we use null is because that means nothing it does not have a parent it itself is a top level object in the hierarchy so now if we press play and check this out And this should work as intended. I would actually like to see what you guys have created in this series so far, because I think over the past 10 tutorials or so, we've really gotten deep into how this game is made. So I would absolutely love to see just how much you've got going on in this game now. So let's get into our car. Let's drive over here. And let's get out. And there we go. We're out by the car. Let's get back in. And let's head over here. And let's stop by the mission point and get out. And there we go. That is just how we do it. So I just want to show you a quick little um, thing. So if we don't have that where we disconnect the player from this game object you'll see what kind of effect you end up with and i suppose sometimes not achieving the desired effect can be quite humorous um i think it's one of the joys and beauty of game development that you can create a lot of these bugs and glitches and they are usually quite funny if sometimes you haven't done something right So if we were to head over here and not have that null, obviously when you download the script from the website it will have null in there so you don't need to worry about that. But if we were to do this and drive down here and try and get out of the vehicle now, you can see what happens. We have turned into... So you can see what's happened there. <laughs> it's gone a little bit funny. So yeah, that's why we use null. So next tutorial, what I think we're going to do is we're going to add some UI to this um, because I want to display on screen, you know, something that says E enter vehicle. So we know that we can actually enter the vehicle. And I think we should probably also look at fixing the minimap because um, if you've noticed, when we get into the vehicle, the minimap goes a little bit haywire. So we're gonna fix that using a similar method to what we've done in this tutorial. So until next time, guys, thank you very much for watching.